Welcome to Tough Crowd, folks. You ever go to a ball late at night and everyone is talking and laughing and then you walk in and everyone shuts up? This is what we're here talking about tonight before you got here. If your IQ is in the 70 point range, you'll want to pay careful attention to our first topic, executing the retarded. You think I forgot about Eminem? Congratulations, him and his uh, wife getting back together. You thought I was going to be at that far. <laughs> folks, I didn't, damn it. Now, I feel that the death penalty should also be applied to mentally retarded people that commit capital crimes. Because if you don't, it's not being fair to all the law-abiding retarded people. I used to work with the retarded. <laughs> but I did. I used to work with the retarded. They always had, they're the nicest people. They're nicer than, than, than we are. But there was always the one creep, you know? And we had this guy, Dennis, no last names. He'd grab, you, <laughs> he'd grab your hair. He was like 6'4". He'd grab your hair with his jelly, sticky, stupid hands and like start pulling you. And you'd have to go like this to make him stop. I'm not even making this up. Johnny Carson's dead, Dennis. Johnny Carson's dead. <laughs> Into his ear. That's the only way he'd stop. He'd start smiling. So who knows? But, um... <laughs> you know, uh, and there was obviously a fine line between retarded and just a dumb killer, you know? I mean, uh... <laughs> You know, what's the line? I guess if, uh, if your favorite movie star is the volleyball in Castaway, you know, that might be a little slow, but I don't know. Uh, okay, so let's move along here. What do you say, folks? Retarded, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, let's, well, let's start with a legend in comedy, one of my favorites, one of the people who got me into this business. Greg, what up? Uh... <laughs> Me. I thought it was going to be Jack. Yeah, was the was old switcheroo, said. boys. He really switched yeah, up. Yeah. That's sweet. You guys are going to deconstruct my awful joke in front of the comments? <laughs> Good timing, guys. <laughs> so so what's, it, what's your question? Should we, exec should should we, we execute retarded people? Should we execute criminals who are mentally retarded or not? Well, how Without the stutter, I, I want my to ask that. How, how retarded? I mean... You know what I mean? It's like, it's, you know how easy it that's is to... That's not a know. scientific, you well, no, but that's know, a, how retarded, you know? Yeah, they well, don't say that. No, but I mean, you, you know, I heard there's got to be a threshold. Well, there's got to be like a threshold, day, yeah. right? I mean, you know how easy it is to fake mild retardation? You know I mean, we can let everybody get away with it. You just have to watch an interview with Freddie Prince Jr. and copy that. I mean, it's not hard to do. You know, two years ago, that might not have been cruel, but the kid's on his way down, Greg. Give him a break. <laughs> And he's one of your people, the Latinos. Come on. It does depend how retarded, though. You're right, man. I mean, if you sit somebody in the electric chair and he goes, where are we going? That's too retarded. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, <laughs> I'm torn. I'm torn. <laughs> what do I feel like we're in the middle of, like, a special uh, education Jeff Foxworthy bed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, would you like to save me? I'm torn about the whole thing. In one way, I think that I think that we should because, you know, how else are they going to learn? And, <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> you kill retarded people. That's going to ruin the Special Olympics, and that's really going to kill. It's really going to kill white people because it's the last sporting event where they really dominate. You know? <laughs> What is the handicapped parking situation at the Special Olympics? <laughs> is it still just the two spots? Because that's another problem oh. for another show. Yeah. Well, but you know they have to. They do. You're saying it's not scientific, but they do. They do have experts that come in and determine whether you're retarded. And there's like an exact IQ number if it's 70 or 65. So somebody's got to give you a test and then come in and tell you, hey, uh, bad news, you're not retarded. I mean, yeah, I can't believe it either. I was convinced you would be, but it turns out you weren't. Well, uh, why don't we move on to juveniles? Uh, when should a juvenile be charged as an adult? Is that, uh, you know, is that when an he's age? retarded. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, and I don't mean ju when should juvenile, the rapper, be charged as an adult? <laughs> well, I've uh, heard one person... <laughs> I wish I was back on MTV for that one. <laughs> one, one person I was talking to said that it should, in any state, be the age of sexual consent but that's not right, because in Mississippi, you'll be executing 11-year-olds. <laughs> I knew that would get nothing, but I did it anyway. That was a good one, except that everyone's sitting here thinking to themselves, he looks like a juvenile retarded criminal. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's ask this question. Do you ever look in the mirror and just think about, like, you should sue God? Does that ever happen? 
That's right, folks. That really hurt. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was brutal, wasn't it? Yeah. It's zingy. How about it's zingers? That's what the show's zingers. about, Jerry. Oh, zingers. zingers, okay? <laughs> it's our little attempt to make the big bucks. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to kick back, but I'm you know, missing some scratching out there. Well, you know what? It, it, seems, it, you know, it seems like everybody wants you know, to punish the victims more, kill the retarded people, you know, charge children as, as adults. We're not, you're not saying, like, for example, if, you're, if they say you're retarded, they're not saying, okay, we let you go now. They're, they're just saying we can't kill you. You're still going to spend your life in jail. I was just going to say that it seems like the death penalty, it seems like more than just a penalty. <laughs> Penalties, you you know, you lose a round, you know, points, deduct a few points, but it's more than. Penalty. Now, what about speaking of penalties? What about for rapists, chemical castration? I can't even believe this is an issue. It's a definite yes from where I'm sitting. But do you think that's right to chemically castrate? I think you need to explain people what well, that you is. you take is a that... pill. You take a little magic pill every day, like Prozac or whatever you take, and then you uh, you know, it stops you from being impotent. I mean, it helps you be impotent. Why do you have to make me answer science questions on my own? Because I, I bet you... I failed science. I was in the same biology class for four years in high school. I never heard of this chemical castration you know, I got on the show. Papers. No, it's chemical. They give you a pill, and it makes you feel like you just saw Norton naked. <laughs> and it, which, in your case, would give you an erection. <laughs> you Jim, I didn't mean for it to go this way. I just wanted to get my shots in and let it go. But I don't think that it actually... Uh, I don't think you should waste money on chemicals for chemical castration. Just go out and spend 20 bucks on hedge clippers. <laughs> I agree. And that comes from a Jersey former landscaper. He knows what he's talking about. They should only chemically castrate or whatever uh, rapists if the woman was definitely not asking for it. <laughs> That's right, man. Don't change the channel. We'll be right back with your local forecast. as a child. I was beaten. My mom used to chase me around with a pool cue. I got spanked with a nail, razor blade, and a buckle with hot water on the end. I think it was just a ruler. Extension cord. Stick, belt, wire. I was hit with a bowling ball. With a hairbrush. A wooden spoon. A wooden spoon. I was hit with a wooden spoon. Not a spoon. A belt, yeah. Did not tell you not to go around that corner. Would I ever hit my kids? Probably, yeah. I just think kids are fragile. I mean, you can hurt a kid by hitting them. Would you hit your kids now? Yeah. These days, you spank your kid, you go to jail. But if you don't spank your kid, your kid raise up to cut your throat, kill you, your brother, your sister, and anybody because you didn't beat them when they was young. Okay, let's get right into it. Is it all right to discipline your children by spanking and slapping them? Statistics show that kids that get hit more grow up to be more violent. So the question a parent has to ask themselves, do you want to raise spoiled creeps or obedient sociopaths? <laughs> As with everything else, there's a fine line between giving your son a couple of swats on the butt and the mother who's wearing the house dress of the cold cream and holds a kid's hand over the stove. 20 years later, he's the kabuki theater rapist. <laughs> <laughs> That was a highbrow one. <laughs> um, let's go. How, how about it? Is it all right to discipline your kids by spanking and slapping? Yes. What? Really? Really? That's all I have. I think it's okay if the... I think it's okay to hit your kid if you're both in the same weight class. <laughs> I was spanked... Uh, um, I was spanked a few times, and all it did to me was, like, now I like getting sp spanked. <laughs> 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 well, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to spank your kid to discipline him. There's, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can cover his head in a towel and hang him off a balcony. That works. That's true. I was thinking, if he, if he did drop that kid, what would the next round of plastic surgery have been like? <laughs> Well, my parents used to hire, actually, the babysitter used to spank me, and it was, uh, I didn't mind the spank. You deserve it if you're a kid. I thought the uh, leather mask and the ball gag were a little much. <laughs> Let me ask you this. <laughs> How much is the media to blame for adolescent violence? People blame the media for everything. It's like kids don't copy everything they see in the media. You know, kids, are, kids go see Keanu Reeves movies all the time. They don't go out and become crappy actors. <laughs> they, have, 
It could tell. Yeah, but don't you think there's a lot to do? Let's face it. You want parents, two jobs, parents are supposed to keep kids from like this onslaught of billions of dollars of corporate advertising and movies and everything else. That's impossible. They go change the channel, right? Uh, just change the channel. You change on any other channel. A and A. It's like you know, when good cops go bad, when good fish, you know, attacks electrical wiring. You put on like Discovery Channel. There's murders everywhere. There's girls going wild. It's a great uh, TV system, but Why you know what I'm saying. Why do those girls go wild? <laughs> I've asked myself because they that seem question. like normal girls, and they go wild. Why do they just go wild? Yeah. What makes? Them, I want to know what makes them go wild. Yeah. Does anyone know? Those, those girls go wild. There's always like they always, uh, you know, sort of get all lesbian on those on those tapes and Ooh. stuff. And I, and I, but I think that's like it's like a way of it's a female empowerment. You know, they kind of like make out with each other. It's kind of like you know we don't need you guys. Right. It's yeah. very empowering when a 15 year old girl flips her shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's no. She's got the DVD well, residual. Maybe it'd be she's doing it for her. She's yes. doing it for her. Just she's like doing she gives jobs for her. <laughs> what? Everybody tried Can't to say BJ. <laughs> Jobs. But what about the fact that even now I'm so you get so jaded after a couple of years. I look at the girls if they just flip their shirt up, I'm like, oh, she's a nice girl. She doesn't like uh, show her, you know, and have the <laughs> ring or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, your standards change. That's all I'm saying. It's all moral relativity, right, Jim? I can't say smell my finger. You can say <laughs> ring. That's not right. <laughs> He's got a good point. They made him take out smell my finger. But <laughs> ring is not so visceral. It's visual without being visceral. Uh, Didn't you want to say something like that, Greg? Uh, well, I want to... <laughs> I'm sorry. Jerry, don't you have a little observation on the Girls Gone Wild thing? It's a little I bit... I think I did it. Can we move on to the next thing? Uh-huh. Uh what? Because I got yelled at by Seinfeld? Big deal. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. I was trying... Huh? We're going to take a short break now, so if you want to go beat your kids, which we weren't talking about for the last ten minutes, you got two and a half minutes to do it. <laughs> That is a panic. <laughs> Hi. We were just talking. Hi. Right, that's why I never did character work on SNL. You happy? We were just talking about raising kids. Were you ever really given some good advice when you were a child? You know, something like don't get in a van with Jim Norton. Well, not all of us were that lucky. That's why we're going to give the panel an opportunity here to give out the advice they wish they'd been given as kids. Jerry, would you care to start? Well, let's be honest. Uh... I've had a big hit show. Uh, I've got my own plane. I, uh, I bought Billy Joel's house and just demolished it. I've got a beautiful wife, a family. Even I would not be so arrogant as to give advice to someone who's about to do so well. <laughs> Greg, if, if you ever grow up and become a comedian and you're bombing in a half-filled club in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and these three enormous girls in the front start heckling you and they yell, you know, you ain't from around here, are you, boy? And, and, and you go, you didn't just say that, did you, you unoriginal, cliche, slinging half-wit? You know, because you, you're a little drunk, you've done a few shots because you just had a phone conversation with your wife before you got on stage. And she's like, I'm sick of you being on the road. And you're like, well, this is what I do. I'm a comedian. What am I supposed to do? This is how I earn a living, okay? You think I want to eat my own nutsack in Murfreesboro, Tennessee every night? You know, so that's in your mind. You're on stage, you know, and then the girl in the front yells, you suck. And you go, hey, don't be mad at me because you caught your rat tail in the tilt world this morning you know and then, and then she you know and then she she goes man i'm gonna kick your ass after the show don't assume that she won't because she's a girl <laughs> jim i have nothing that poignant but i've learned three important things that i would love to pass along to a younger person number one never wear hot pants and gyrate on santa's lap in the mall <laughs> Number two, black coffee and Mexican food is the wrong combination to eat before a prostate exam. <laughs> uh, and number three, always do things yourself, and if you have to hinge your career on someone, pick Jerry and not some mean Irish talk show host with skinny legs and a fat head. That's good advice. I don't think I don't think Conan O'Brien's going to appreciate that, but it's honest advice. Sarah, the kids at school that tease you 
They're just jealous because your hairy Jew arms are cool. They're cool. And then, oh, two things I had. And then the second one is, don't say chink on TV. Unless you want your career to skyrocket. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and now here's a few words of advice I give to little seven-year-old Colin. Hey, little Colin. So what? You're the shortest kid in the class. You don't have to make everybody laugh. Instead of trying to tap dance for the whole world, running desperately on a hamster wheel, slow down and accept yourself as yourself. If you don't know that, you'll go through years of depression, substance abuse, and an endless stream of soul-murdering relationships where the other person was too normal to realize they're living with a hollow mechanical cyborg. <laughs> And even when you gain some semblance of materialist success, you'll never come close to filling up the void. Well, there you have it, folks. We'd like to wish you a good night. Take care. Have a good one.